okay so getting this um sensor cable out is a very simple matter this is let's see if you can see that yep this is the brake pad here and this sensor just grab hold of it so it's not being pulled by the wire and just give that a wobble and out she comes now you do need to take care of that because they're about 30 bucks to replace that's got a whole lot of brake dust and muck on it but um, you see there's a metal clip here and that just springs and holds it in place and it'll go into the new pad and what happens if you want to know if your sensor is okay or not there's this flat edge and then on this side there's that little hump and uh, what happens as if it gets close enough to scrape the top off that hump it breaks the little wire in here and sends a signal saying you need to change your brakes really quick um, this hasn't gotten that low it hasn't broken the sensor so we can reuse this sensor but if the sensor's got scratch marks on it or if it's been rubbing then you do need to replace it now how to replace it i'll put a link up here because it's exactly the same on this car as what it was on another where i've done showing you to replace so have a look at that link you just follow the um, sensor wires back up and under the um, body deadening stuff here there's a little box and you can unplug it and switch it out but have a look at that video it'll show you how to do it so there you go once that sensor wires out that pad comes out and uh, we're ready to give all this a clean up get all the dust off it and uh, put the new bits in okay so now give all of this a clean and a wipe up and what's interesting you have a look in here these brakes are made by Bosch so that's interesting all of the places where the brake pads are going to slide along um, you need to put a little bit of grease to so give that a good clean up we'll put some grease anywhere where the metal of the brake pad is going to be touching metal we'll grease it like also on the um, face of where the piston is where it presses that's metal on metal so put a bit of grease there it just stops the vibrations and keeps it um, lubed up and nice so give it all a clean i've just got to get it as clean as you like but you certainly need to to get the grime off so it, there's not going to be dirt getting into your, your new brakes when you set okay so now we've got this little locking pin out you have to get that out first and i've also taken the time to put a bit of wd-40 on here because these can tend to rust on and stick um so let's see how lucky we are now it's not just going to come off um just give it a bit of a bang this is going in the bin so you don't have to worry about it you can give it a bit of a whack and then give it a whack from behind but if you're keeping the rotor, well, you won't be taking it off, I suppose, but there we go. And she's off. It does take a bit, depending on how rusted on. If you've got salt and so forth on your roads, then that'll take even more. So we'll get that out of the way. Now I'm going to get some sandpaper and I'm going to clean that rust off, give this hub all a good clean. And um, then I will actually put a little bit of um, anti-seize or grease. I'm going to put a bit of grease on here. Um, so that it doesn't stick next time around um, plastic cap over the center of the hub and you can pry that off just stick a screwdriver in the slot down there and have a look there's actually a lot of rust forming in here so i'm going to give that a clean up with some sandpaper and just give it a light spray so that the water that's getting trapped and caught in there doesn't um, keep that rust going because the hub's a permanent part you don't change that when you change your broker grader so have a look in there and just inspect yours and give it a sand up and a bit of a clean if need be as well okay so now it comes time to um, clean this in now i've just been wiping all these down with a rag of course there is a product called brake clean which you should be given all this to spray down if you do that you're on your concrete floor you see i've got a bit of cardboard down there just so it doesn't all soak into your concrete yeah getting all of that brake dust give it all a good wipe down now what we need to do is press this piston back in now you can actually manhandle that back you can actually just give it a good old press and that's going back a little bit you the special tools you can get which ratchet out and wind out and all sorts of things what i'm going to do today is just use a oil filter wrench and squeeze this so that it goes back i'm going to put the rag on the front edge there so it's not damaging the front edge of that piston and then back to front and then just give that a squeeze and can you see that that piston is going back 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 and that's all that's required just to press it back because the brake pads are thicker and 
what the brake pad has to go over. The rotor is also thicker, so you need more space here. And that's what this is about. So press that back like that. That's done, not difficult. And now we can put our uh, new brake pads in. Okay, so here are the new brake pads, substantially thicker than the old ones. There they are. And um, we're gonna put those in. Obviously this one here with the big spring on the back goes into the piston and this one comes on this side here. So as I said, everywhere where it's metal to metal. So on the face here, we're gonna put a little smear of grease on the sliders here where these um, line up and slide on the brake bits. We're gonna put some grease as well. So when I say grease, I am of course talking specialist brake grease because of the temperatures, as it gets really hot, you don't use just standard grease. It's gotta be uh, brake grease that you use on these parts. Okay, so there's a thin film on the um, piston and then this can go into place like that that's now on and this guy here is going to sit over here but we'll put the brake together a bit more so it'll hold in place but you can see there where we're going to be putting the grease where these um run on there okay so now it's time to put your new rotor on and of course well when i um get something like this before i took the old one off i actually got this and held it up in front and made sure it was um the right one now you want to keep the grease and muck off this as much as you possibly can you don't want any grease on this surface and um, you do give them a bit of a clean down so it was some brake clean or something just to get the um, coating off so give it a spray and a wipe so i'm going to put a bit of this brake grease just on this inside edge here and that's just going to make it so much easier to get off next time around so that it doesn't rust and stick on now when you're putting this on here using the tiniest little bits and little smears you don't want it in excess and going to places all over the place. Okay, so then that lifts up, just line up, somewhat line up your little uh, hole. There you go, that's how she goes. Then you get your little holding piece. The main strength and holding of this is actually done with the, the wheel studs. And you, you spin this around so it lines up. There's only one place it can go. Do that up with a socket so it's not too tight. There you go. If you want to really do better with tensioning that, then um, get someone to put their foot on the... <laughs> no, that won't work, putting the foot on the brake. You could lock this up anyway and um, tension that up. But we don't... It, it doesn't... It's not the only thing that holds the rotor on. As I said, the wheel nuts, when the wheel is on, are actually holding it to the hub here. Okay, so now we put the carrier back on. This had to come off in order to get the rotor off and on. And now it can go back on and then we can put the uh, brake assembly and the disc pads on, but we'll put this guy on first. So we're putting these 16 mil bolts back in um, and just lining that up like that. And then we'll screw these up and um, tighten them up and then we'll put the brake assembly back on. So now is when you get your grease in on all of these um, uh, faces where the pads are gonna slide. Cause once you put the pads in there, you won't be able to get in there anymore get your brake grease in there on those surfaces spread it out on all four of those okay so we're giving these a really good clean these are the carrier bolts that slides the um, pad slide on giving these a good clean both of them and then we're going to get again a little smear of the uh, brake grease onto both of these and cover them all over this is the um the whole carrier slides on these so a little bit of grease and uh smear it all over there, there it comes. We've got it greased on this, and then we just got to do this edge as well. I'm just going to sit that on and then lift the carrier um, right over the top. But before I do, we're just going to um, put the grease on these so that it's in place. Get the sensor out of the way, and this can now lift right into place like that. Exactly like that and then put those these sliders in and that'll hold that in place so we've got the allen key pressed in place and then just wobbling this um you just get the thread to start and that's that's started off and then you can just wind that in don't do it up tight though but um get it started and then bring your other carrier up i would suggest putting your tool in it makes it easier to align and then put it into the boot it's hanging in the right spot yeah there we go that started so those two are in so we're going to pull those two in 
and um, do them up. Now again, these carrier bolts don't actually have to be super tight. So you get them up tight, look up the, spe the um, torque on them, but these big 16 mil bolts do have to be very tight. These guys here, these carrier bolts, they're, um, I think it was 22 foot pound, but uh, they don't have to be as tight. So we're just gonna pull those up nice and firm. Okay, so then we'll put these plugs back in. We've got those up nice and firm like that, top and bottom, and the carrier is back in.